Hello, my dear friends, brothers, and sisters. Welcome to day 101 of this podcast with the Bible through the year. My name is Leo Lozano, Associate Pastor at Revive GMC in Pasadena, Texas. Today, we have a long scripture. We will be reading Matthew 24 in its entirety. That is from verse 1 to verse 51. Um, but yeah, I'm so grateful that you decided to open your Bible today and spend a few minutes reading the scripture. And my prayer is that throughout the day we will meditate on the scripture and in doing so we'll create a space for the spirit of the living God to speak to our hearts. So with that in mind, let us go to the Bible together. As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings, but he responded, do you see all these buildings? I tell you the truth. They will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world, but all this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. And then the end will come. The day is coming when you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about, the sacrilegious object that causes the, the desecration standing in the holy place. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for a pregnant woman and for nursing mothers in those days. And pray that your flight will not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for there will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began, and it will never be so great again. In fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive, but it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Then if anyone tells you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is. Don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders, so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. So if someone tells you, look, the messiah is out in the desert, don't bother to go and look. Or look, he's hiding here. Don't believe it. For as the lightning flashes in the east and shines to the west, so it will be when the Son of Man comes. Just as the gathering of vultures shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. Immediately after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then at last, the sign that the Son of Man is coming will appear in the heavens, and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send out his angels with a mighty blast of a trumpet, and they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that the summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, you can know his return is very near. Right at the door, I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. 
In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. So you too must keep watch. For you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time for the Son of Man will come when least expected. A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth. The master will put the servant, that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant is evil and thinks, my master won't be back for a while, and he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk? The master will return and announce and unexpected, and he will cut the servant to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I know there is so much here. We just read 51 verses, right? But I want to say just a couple of things. Number one, yeah, the end of times. We, we're always kind of uh, obsessed with that. I remember growing up, there was a time in my life when that was it. We were obsessed with this whole thing. You might remember those novels left behind, right? Uh, and, and there was a boom in, in that whole scene, right? Where, you know, scathology was was the thing everyone was, you know, trying to learn from and going to conferences about and, you know. And there's always people, you know, pronouncing the end of times and it's happening in this day and blah, blah, blah. And listen. Jesus is super clear. No one knows, not even himself, only the Father. So do not worry about those things. Sure, pay attention to the signs and whatever you want to do, but at the end of the day is we have to live the same way today than in 100 years. That, that should not change. And I love that that is how this ends, about these two, uh, you know, people in charge, and one is a good servant, right? And he treats the people right, even if the master is not around. And there's another servant who is evil, and because the master is not there, he takes advantage of that, and he treats himself and treats others badly. And so that, to me, that's it, right? Let us be like the good servant, who treats others kindly because he knows he is just a servant. He has been entrusted with this responsibility, with this gift. And he he knows his, his master is a good master. And so he treats everyone as if the master was present. And so, yeah, let's do the same. Let's be kind with one another. Remember not so long ago we read these the, the scripture that says, hey, these are the two biggest commandments. And it was love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love others as yourself. That's it. We got to love God. We got to love people. Today, tomorrow, and for the next millennia, if that's necessary, until he comes back. That doesn't change. We love God. We love the people and he'll come when he'll come and we will all celebrate when that is time but in the meantime yeah let's honor him by loving and caring for the ones he loves thank you for joining me today and i cannot wait to be with you again tomorrow god bless you